What's up, crypto hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack our cryptocurrency, blockchain, and NFT education. If you guys are brand new here, we try to simplify down everything around game theory of these new projects that have been rolling out. And I'm really excited today to continue the meme token series. If that sounds interesting to you, slap a like on this video. It helps get the video out to more people. Leave a comment with your favorite meme token out there. And on this episode, I'm going to be going over Hawk Finance. Now, this is spelled H-O-K-K -K, Finance. And there is some really deep building going on here. Now, one big difference between things like Shiba and Dogecoin is around who's building. And I think that this is a really cool area of expertise that Hawk Finance has that Shiba and Dogecoin does not where you have this ecosystem that's built out around meme tokens. And if you haven't been watching the series, basically meme tokens are people that are voting with their dollars because they're not millionaire investors. They're the average person. They're voting for something that is very speculative in many cases, but ultimately they're voting to be part of a community. And feeling part of a community was really something that Dogecoin pioneered. A lot of these NFTs and these communities now are riding on that similar wave of feeling part of something. But now when you introduce building into the picture, if you have a vibrant community, you have this meme momentum and this concept of joining the community, you have this magical mixture. Now, the difference between Hawk Finance and something like a Shiba and a Dogecoin is the fact that they are going after Asia and Africa. Now, there's a lot of strategy going on there because that bridge is already being talked about. If you watch Bloomberg right now, you see that there's a lot of movement going on in Africa and putting in a decentralized structure for a new financial system using something like meme, meme tokens is a very powerful concept for the younger generations coming up. Because if you look at Robinhood and some of these other platforms that have seen the rise of Shiba and a lot of these meme tokens, they will tell you firsthand that it is not something to joke around about. There is a ton of momentum here. The younger populations want to feel part of this movement. That said, in this video in the meme token series, I'm going to dive onto the Hawk Finance website, show you guys some of the products and the initiatives that they're working on, including their decentralized portal. So part of the crazy building that's going on behind the scenes here with Hawk Finance is they launched on three chains. That's right, not just Ethereum. They launched on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, and the Huobi chain, which is called Heco. And this is quite the feat to accomplish. If you guys are brand new to the space, normally people will launch on one, like for example, Shiba launching on Ethereum, and that is the job done. They start building on top of that. They launched on three different blockchains, which is a very important cross-chain component here that I believe to be the future. A lot of cross-chain communication already going on right now, but launching one project across three chains means that one community is going to stretch across these three networks, which is really bringing that to the forefront in terms of how these meme tokens can actually take hold and build out some actual financial instruments to help. HawkFi is where we're gonna start on their website. It goes through the decentralized ecosystem that they're building out. And this platform is going to allow for people to really leverage all the different instruments that exist for investing in decentralized finance with this token. So without further ado, let's jump onto their site. I'm gonna go through some of their products, show you guys the overview, and let's dive into it. All right, so as you can see from the homepage immediately, you see the three chains that they launched on. I mentioned this before, but this is no small feat. I want everyone to know how incredibly difficult this is to launch one project across different chains and manage to organize it. It's very, very difficult. So you can see they have Ethereum, BSC, and the Heco chain, which I hadn't really heard much about, did some research on, and it is quite cool that Huobi uh, came out with it. And I wanna go through the products that they're working on here. As you can see, transferring money alone in something like Africa is such a broken setup. I've talked to a couple different companies in the traditional payment space in Africa. Even Jack Dorsey talks about how broken this is for entrepreneurs in Africa right now. So literally having it be sent instantly at the lowest rates is such, such a big, that's a company on its own. And that product is hopefully going to get into the hands of as many entrepreneurs as humanly possible if they can set up shop and they can start accepting payments. 
Now, the DeFi concept for the financial system that they're building out between Africa and Asia is really, really fascinating to me because with DeFi, you have dozens of different instruments that you can add to that. You have all the different types of collateralized loans that people need access to. And ultimately, they are going to have their own HawkFi platform where people can get access to this, not being subject to any other you know, central party of any kind. So the last one here, grow your pension and retire early. This is one that is really very impactful. And I'm curious to see how this is going to work out because this is a very, 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 very big issue that's going to be facing Gen Z and a lot of the upcoming generations. So it's cool to see people even talking about this. First up, we have HawkFi, obviously, that I mentioned before, that is the multi-chain approach between ETH, BSC, and HECO. That's where this kind of Uniswap concept is going to be developed. Very cool to see that. You have the wallet, of course, and I like that they have the integration with the traditional system. That is a very, very seamless and well thought through way of tracking and managing investments and payments with this card. You can see on their site, there is the actual little card here going through what appears to be Apple Pay. And having that crypto wallet synced up like a crypto.com is such a big stage or step to get to. So that is pretty, pretty impressive. The Capital One, where there's a launch pad focused on early funding for DeFi projects. This is what I was mentioning before about Shiba Inu and Dogecoin really kind of failing on this front to invest in that community after the fact. So hopefully what's going to happen here is people within the community are going to help after they've you know made some investments they've made some gains they're going to help holders and invest in projects that have to do with uh, hawk finance and i think that's a really smart idea this one is a big big concept around being green now proof of stake has really pushed the needle on this and i think that having this equity crowdfunding platform and focusing on a lot of the research around being green and going green as that's such a topic of conversation right now. I think that that's a really cool concept. Now, energy sector projects, I think I'll be curious to see what type of energy sector projects they're talking about, but ultimately investing in green energy and things like that and moving projects right now towards that, I think is such a good bridge to develop. The NFT to be announced, super pumped about that. Anybody that is interested in NFTs, definitely check the link in the description below. Now, the school and university financial education and management, I think, is a very underrepresented piece here. You can see that they are trying to go after, you know, parents helping their children. And this is something that happened with Shiba Inu. Very, very young investors were getting involved and making insane gains didn't know what to do with it. And that is something that can be solved through education, you can teach them how to move that money into different assets and, and really try to manage wealth at a young age. And this is something that the young generation is getting involved in. They see Bitcoin and Ethereum kind of out of their reach. And even traditional instruments, of course, are what they feel are the stone age. So getting into something like a meme token like this is very important to have education around that for young people that all of a sudden could make some life-changing gains. The loans, I'm hoping that this is around small businesses. I really, really like the idea of having loans out there to small businesses. And of course, the pension piece, the decentralized pension powered by the community is such an audacious goal. I love that. And I really hope that this succeeds because pensions are something that scares me and should scare a lot of people out there i've into the tokenomics real quick i wanted to go through the three different chains they have this well set up here so on the eth chain they have an eight percent sell by tax the four percent reward and it looks to be four billion in supply 2.5 billion in supply on bsc and 500 million in supply on heco they're the same buy sell tax on here. You can see the daily volume on BSC and ETH is 59,000 on ETH and 35,000 on BSC. Heco, I'm not quite sure how big the community there is of, of buyers and sellers right now or markets, but it is very interesting to see uh, that coming online here. The symbol is the same across the board and the market cap cumulatively looks to be around the 70 million mark which is quite <laughs> quite impressive to see that already 
And this is such a cool way of looking at it when you have the rewards set up across uh, the different chains and the number of holders. And it's a really great stark comparison between the two communities. When you launch on three chains, you're kind of dependent on those communities in a way to adopt and you have to market to everyone. So it's like you're running three consecutive marketing campaigns to get across the three different communities of these three different networks. So really cool to see this level of uh, customization for each chain. The four, 4 billion versus the 2.5 billion, the amount of holders, 7,100 to 4,095. But overall, taking this screenshot of cumulatively, they're crushing it on, on this front. Like I, I'm very impressed by the amount of holders and volume they have across two different chains because that's uh, each one of these is, is, a, is a company on its own to try and get market penetration in each one of these chains. So very cool to see that. Uh, definitely impressed by the th three pronged launch. That is it for my overview of Hawk Finance. One of the coolest components here is that they are building a headquarters in not only Singapore, but also in Dubai, building out a world-class board of advisors. I've been following this for a couple of weeks. And full disclaimer, this is a sponsored review. I reached out to the team to be part of this meme token series where I'm really trying to unpack these different projects and just to learn more about this because I've gotten so many questions around meme tokens, what's going on? Why are people not paying more attention to this? And I dove deeper into this project and finding out the strategics that they have on board is quite exciting. So I'm gonna be watching this and all the other projects that I've covered in this series very, very closely in 2022. When they're building out this bridge between these three chains, they're also accomplishing something that I wanted to save for the last part here. They're going after pensions. Now, people like Anthony Pompliano have invested with pension money in the past, but ultimately pensions are this kind of broken system. And I've been waiting for a project to actually spearhead how they can disrupt pensions and how that's gonna work. But with people in Africa and Asia that are approaching that age of needing to be able to pull out of their pension for retirement, especially after something like the pandemic where that stressed a lot of the system, I think that this is a ripe opportunity for people to go after a complete change of a pension-based system. Cool to see them working with regulators, with HawkFi, and really trying to help with education as well as disrupting the pension system and helping people migrate into Web3 from the traditional pension system. That is it for this episode. The links will be in the description below to Hawk Finance. Definitely check them out. I'm thinking about covering this a little bit more in the coming months because they are talking about something that I've been following for a while with the African market and the Asia market and the pension concepts. So that is it for this episode. Slap a like if you like these episodes of the series. I'm obsessed with this meme token concept here. And that is it. I will see you guys on the next episode of Hack Crypto.